We're going to look at an application of calculus, of derivatives, in business and economics. Uh, the idea here is related to a concept called revenue, and we need to define that. Revenue is the total amount of money collected by a company, by a firm that's selling or something, or producing something. Um, you could also refer to it as total sales sometimes, but don't confuse it with profit. Revenue is not the same as profit. Think of it this way. If you're operating a lemonade stand and you charge $2 for each lemonade and you sell 10 of them, your revenue will be $20. $2 times 10 lemonades is $20 total. But that would not necessarily all be profit. To calculate your profit, you'd have to subtract your costs from your revenue. For profit, you'd want to subtract out however much money you spent on lemons and sugar and paper cups, for example. So don't confuse revenue and profit. Uh, now we're just going to talk about revenue in this video. And revenue, you can just think of like in that previous lemonade example as price times the number sold. Now in economics, uh, sometimes we try to predict the relationship between the price and the number of units sold. And when we can do that, when we can model that relationship with a formula, we call that a demand function. For example, if we let Q represent the quantity and P represent the price, then if we can write P in terms of Q, that would be a demand function. You can then get revenue by just multiplying the quantity times the price. And if you can write P in terms of Q, that means you're going to be able to write the revenue entirely in terms of Q. Here's an example. Suppose that you can predict that the number of, givens, uh, the number of gizmos sold will depend on the price according to this formula. Uh, notice that if you increase P, you're going to decrease the quantity sold. That makes sense. If you increase the price, fewer people will buy them probably. So what would the formula for the revenue be in terms of the quantity sold? Well, I can write the revenue in terms of Q and P. What I'd like to do is write P in terms of Q. We can do that. If Q is given by 250 minus 0.25P, all we have to do is rearrange the equation to isolate P. So I can write P in terms of Q, and then I can write R in terms of just Q by replacing P with the formula we just found. Then you can simplify this formula. So in this case, we would see that the revenue is 1,000 minus 4Q squared. So we just got that by writing the price in terms of the quantity so that we could then write the revenue in terms of just the quantity. Now suppose you've done that. At a given price, you can earn a certain amount of revenue. At a given price, you're going to sell a certain quantity. Um, how much more or less revenue would you earn if you tried to sell one more unit? Now remember that trying to sell one more unit would likely require you to decrease the price that you're charging. So we have to be careful how we think of this. But this is an important question in business and economics. The additional extra revenue you would obtain from selling one more unit, we call that the marginal revenue. And it's usually abbreviated as just MR. Here's another way of thinking of the question we just asked that's going to allow us to figure out how to use calculus to work with this kind of question. Uh, suppose you're charging a current price that would predict you're going to sell Q units at that price. If you change the price in order to sell Q plus one units instead, how much will that change your revenue? So you can think of what we're doing is just asking, what's the difference in revenue? If you imagine that we could get a certain revenue from selling Q plus one units and a different revenue from selling Q units, 
what would the difference in, between those two numbers be? That's the marginal revenue. Now, the right side of that expression inspired someone a long time ago who had learned calculus and realized the following. If you write the derivative of the revenue function out, remember it's this limit, comes from the limit definition of derivative, and then try to approximate that limit by plugging in a small value for h, in particular by plugging in the number 1 for h. Then the approximation for the derivative is exactly the same thing as the marginal revenue, right? The right-hand side of this last line of calculation is equal to the right-hand side of the marginal revenue equation above it. So therefore, since that right-hand side is an approximation for r prime, marginal revenue must be an approximation for r prime. Or usually we think of it the other way. We think of the derivative of r, the derivative of the revenue function, as giving us a way to approximate the marginal revenue. And in fact, we usually just assume that these two things are exactly the same, that it's not merely an approximation. Uh, this makes a lot of our calculations easier. And in practice, it's a pretty good approximation. So we'll use it as if it's the exact value. All right, here's how you can apply this idea. Suppose that you know what the relationship is between price and quantity. So you have a demand function. And you've already written the price in terms of the quantity. What would the marginal revenue be of selling a 21st unit? In this case, gizmos. What, what would the additional revenue be if we tried to sell a 21st gizmo? So if you think about what we're asking there, you're, we're imagining that we could sell 20 and get a certain revenue. How much more revenue would we get if we sold 21 units instead of 20? So first of all, you can write the revenue in terms of just Q. And then you can calculate the marginal revenue by taking the derivative of the revenue. And if you want to know how much more you'd get from selling one additional unit, going from 20 to 21, you just want to calculate the marginal revenue at 20. That tells you the additional revenue you'd get from selling one more unit. Uh, that comes out to be 840. And by the way, since this is a derivative, it has units, uh, the units of the function divided by the units of the variable. The function is revenue, which has units of dollars. So we have uh, units of dollars divided by units sold. So your marginal revenue will be $840 per unit. That means that extra unit should increase your revenue by $840.